Oh, I wish I could tell you how much I hate some video equipment some days. Uh, today, real quick, we're going to do something. I had someone call me about uh, a outdoor unit where the contactor was cycling on and off. Uh, it was cycling the compressor and the outdoor fan on and off. Uh, that was obviously something to do with the 24 volts. There was uh, something in the circuit, a safety pressure switch, temperature switch on the compressor, something. But uh, I'm going to show you real quick because they asked me how would I find out what's causing it okay so we're gonna start real quick um, you gotta have a voltmeter or a multimeter uh, I love flute been with them for a long time so uh, they never let me down but uh, that's personal preference so I'm gonna put my my meter on volts and the first thing that I do is I prove power okay so on this defrost board now this is a heat pump so it's got a defrost board I got my reversing valve and actually a high pressure switch down here I'll show you in a second uh, it's got a low pressure switch on it as well and it's almost exactly like the unit that uh, this person uh, was on the other day so uh, it should work out well uh, you can see over here in the corner we've got our thermostat wire coming into the unit and this is our field connections okay and uh, the factory you know pretty much inside so what you got to do when you're looking for electrical problems is you got to prove power so for me since we narrowed it down to the low voltage uh, we were kind of doing like the low voltage hopscotch deal right I'm going to come over here to the side of this unit, uh, to the side of this defrost board, and I have a plug where I've got all my connections. I've got R and C, so that's my power. I've got a connection for O, so the reversing valve, I've a, uh, a connection for Y, so for the contactor coil, and a connection for W, since this is a heat pump, so we can and, uh, send power to the heat strips inside when we're in defrost. But So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to prove 24 volts. There we go. So I've got 24 volts coming into these wire nuts and sitting at this main plug on the board. And since we're talking about a cycling contactor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave one lead on common. So I'm gonna hold that hand still and it's not gonna move. If you needed to use like an alligator clip or if you had the leads that have the uh, attachment on the end for an alligator clip and you wanted to clamp onto a common, um, you, you start by proving power so you know what you're dealing with, okay? And on this board, uh, we've got a uh, yellow wire nut uh, connection down here that's 24 volts coming from the thermostat so what i would do is make sure it goes into this defrost board i would check i would check why okay and i would hold that there until the unit cycled off all right and you don't want to jump this out you want to let it cycle on and off because what you're going to do is you're going to hold your meter uh, in a you're going to find the circuit and you're going to hold your meter at certain test points so that you know who was the last person that had constant power all right so we're looking for the one that dropped the ball basically so right here i've got 24 volts if the unit cycled off right now right let me let me keep my finger still if the unit cycled off right now and i still had 24 volts that means that it wasn't up to this plug it's somewhere after all right so I would look at the wiring diagram, and I'll try to show you where I'm checking uh, by putting up the diagram. Uh, there is a terminal right here, this yellow with the pink stripe wire. This is Y coming out of the board. So the first check was Y going in. We got to make sure it comes out because it's got to get to the contact coil. So I would put my lead right here and wait for the unit to cycle. Now, like I said, you can clip it with an alligator clip or or what have you, but. Uh, if the unit cycled off and I still had 24 volts, that tells me that power went in the board and out the board and was not the problem, okay? So I would follow this circuitry here and I would find what's next. It's gonna be the low pressure switch. So this yellow and pink wire coming from the board is actually leading into the pressure switch. So we know that it had 24 volts. We wanna make sure that the pressure switch passed it. So how do you do that? You look at your diagram and find, and physically find, where the low pressure switch connects to the next safety. And in that case, it connects directly to the high pressure switch in this one. So I'm going to check right here at this connection point of the low and the high pressure switch versus my common over here with my left hand, right? And I've got 24 volts, so I know it's passed through that far. 
if the unit cycled off right now and I had 24 volts, that means that the low pressure switch is not the one that's causing it. We gotta keep going. If it cycled off and read zero, that meant that this low pressure switch is the one that's opening and, and breaking that circuit. So uh, in the case of this gentleman, when he did this low pressure check uh, or this, uh, this voltage check on the low pressure switch where it met the high pressure switch, it read 24 volts but the contactor disengaged. So guess what? Now you've got to follow, since I know what's going in, I got to find out where the high pressure switch comes out. And it actually, since this is pretty much the same unit for what he was working on, it actually ended at the contactor coil. So he was checking 24 volts while the unit was running. Uh, and when it cycled off, he read zero, just like what we saw on the meter there. So he had 24 and then all of a sudden the unit cut off and he read zero. So he's already checked the board, uh, you know, from the thermostat into the board, out of the board, the low pressure switch. The high pressure switch was the last thing that got power and then it dropped it. So the high pressure switch was what was cutting it off. And that's how you would kind of hopscotch through that board. And like I said, I'll try to show you the circuits uh, as we go. So um, if everything checked out and you had 24 volts all the way up until the contactor coil and then it cut off and you still had 24. Now you're looking at a uh, probably a, a more rare occurrence. Um, most safeties break the hot side that I've seen personally, but I have come across some boards that break the common. So you could very well have something going on with a board and it, there's a, a something in the circuit on the common side of that contactor coil and that could be what's causing it to uh, open up uh, the circuit and cut the unit off. So uh, in this particular case, they were trying to charge the unit with some refrigerant. They thought it was low, but as they were charging refrigerant into this unit, it kept cycling on and off and they had enough sense to stop before they overcharged it. And a lot of technicians would get caught up around, uh, you know, caught up around the axle there about, well, it was low on Freon. It's the low pressure switch turning it on and off. And in our case, it was actually not. It was the high pressure switch cutting it off. So there's an, there's another problem there. This will tell you, you know, the, hopefully the pressure switch was working properly. Um, you'll have to make that determination. Uh, but once we found that the high pressure switch was the one cutting it on and off, what we did was we bypassed it. And I only recommend that while, you know, while you're there watching it. This is not something that you leave in someone's system. This is a troubleshooting technique. So they actually took the high pressure switch out of the circuit and connected the low pressure switch to the contactor coil. So we still had some degree of safety, but we could at least let the unit run more than the two seconds before it cycled off. And while it's running, you should have your gauges hooked up. You should have your amp meter on the compressor, you know, everything that you, you know, would use to troubleshoot electrical uh, faults and refrigerant faults. Um, have all those hooked up and ready. Don't don't bypass a safety and then go to the van to get everything. You should have all that on site hooked up, ready to go, because if there's a problem, you need to be able to turn that unit off. Turn it off at the breaker, you know, pull the, the uh, pressure switch wire off the contactor, you know, whatever you gotta do. But you don't leave a safety bypassed while you're not there watching it. So hopefully this helps a little bit. If you got any questions, always, you know, just uh, make a comment, but uh, you can, like and subscribe and throw the thumbs up I'd, I'd appreciate it i thank everybody for watching so um hopefully you know we all learn a little bit from this but uh that's how i would do it so until next time we'll see you